All right, just a quick video here about um, selling your gear using a company like MPB or KEH. Those are both companies that uh, operate here in the United States. Um, MPB actually is based in the UK though. Uh, they have an entity here in the US in New York, New York City area. Uh, KEH, I believe, is based in the Atlanta, Georgia area. And um, the other thing, um, eBay, talking about eBay, uh, which is how I normally would sell my gear. But I did sell uh, some things to MPB. Interest in doing something like that. Um, I'll just kind of go over the pros and cons of both using eBay versus a place like KEH or even B&H Photo. Uh, which is a big camera store, or Adorama, another big camera store. Both of those will buy gear from you and resell it, you know, so they'll buy used gear. You can buy used gear from them. They'll buy it from you. You can, I don't know if they can do trades, but MPB, you can do trades or, you know, trade for gear that they have. Uh, you know, you're getting trading for used gear, um, which can be in like new condition, uh, or, you know, you're just selling to them. So i um, using my Bluetooth app to just trigger the recording here on my Nikon Z8. And uh, by the way, just real quick on that, um, this is 4K, 24P. Um, so I'm in aperture priority. Uh, I'm not using any uh, neutral density filters or anything. I don't do much video, so I never really had gotten into using uh, neutral density filters and making sure the shutter speed is exactly perfect uh, for video. So, but to me, for something like this, it always looks really good. Um, so this is, again, 4K, 24P. Um, auto white balance and I believe you know with the Nikon you have auto white balance and you have like keep overall atmosphere keep warm colors or or keep white or something like that I've, there's also a natural light auto which to me when I checked it here it just seemed a little too greenish in the shade so I'm using uh, auto white balance with uh, keep warm colors Move Link, I believe is the name of it. Little wireless lav mic, which is a 2.4 gigahertz, which has interfered with Wi-Fi before. You know, the, where the Wi-Fi streaming to my Snapridge app on a camera. I'm getting a little too far into this. I'm supposed to be talking about eBay and everything, but um, the Wi-Fi, these 2.4 gigahertz wireless microphones. If you ever stream Wi-Fi from your camera to an app to be able to see yourself on the app, and if you don't have a screen that doesn't, you know doesn't flip out like um, the Z8 doesn't flip out so I can't really see myself so I just have to either pre-position myself like I did here you know make a little short video figure out where I need to stand and come back and just trigger it with Bluetooth or you can stream it through the app and I have some had some interference from the Fuji X-H2 that I had uh, also the Nikon Z8 with uh, the Wi-Fi streaming from the camera to the app on my phone then interfering with the microphone and cutting out the audio and kind of distorting it um, so in this case, I'm just using Bluetooth to trigger it, but um, you can use a UHF um, radio frequency, you know, get a headset, wireless headset, which you can actually get further distance anyway, if you use a UHF um, wireless. So anyway, there's some notes on that, but uh, okay, so MPB, I've had two main transactions with them, one to sell several items, uh, and well, actually just trading. So trading in something and um, getting um, like new equipment from them. So that first experience, everything went fine. Uh, they even upgraded the um, one of the two of the items I had marked as excellent condition um, and they upgraded the condition to like new and gave me a little extra money for that. Um, so that was nice. Uh, I did have one lens that had a little problem. You know, I didn't think it was totally like new condition like it was rated by them uh, and the focus ring on it was a little noisy. Uh, so I sent it back and you know they replaced it, no problem, no no extra money, it was just a direct swap, that was fine. So the, the part that I had a little trouble with the second time, which was pretty irritating, um, four lenses, not just one, not two, not two, not, not three, not four, I'm sorry, not one, not two, not three, but four, I just saw, a, I got distracted, I saw a groundhog run back <laughs> behind me there. Uh, let's see, you see that kind of stuff out here. So. Uh, for the lenses, okay, so here's the issue. Two of the lenses that I got from them, I bought them from them. I bought these lenses from MPB in like new condition. And I got them and they, they did look like new. They were pristine. Uh, they came with cheap aftermarket lens caps. 
fine. Uh, one of them didn't have a lens hood, which it's listed in there whether you get the lens hood or not. And I probably just ordered the one that didn't have a lens hood because it was in like new condition for the lens. So I spent like $35 for a lens hood, OEM lens hood for that lens and another $12 or whatever for lens caps. And so anyway, what I sold back to them, I only had about two months and I just, you know, made a decision to change gear, you know, kind of switch back to a different system. So, um, so these lenses I only had for two months from them. You know, again, I bought them from MPB. They were in like new condition. They basically sat in my drawer except for when I used them and everything was carefully handled. Um, I sent them back to them two months later, exact same condition with better lens caps and a lens hood. And lo and behold, they marked them as excellent condition. Um, so that was not very amusing. You know, I was kind of irritated by that. But overall, the total for these four lenses that I'm talking about that got marked down as excellent instead of like new is about $112. It wasn't a huge difference, but it's just the point of it that I take such good care of my gear and send it back to them in the exact same condition that they sent it to me in. You know, when they sold it to me as like new, I gave it back to them in like new and they rated it as excellent this time. And I can just about bet you they're going to sell it as like new on their website. I can't promise or guarantee that, but I, that's just my, my uh, suspicion there. The other lens, uh, there was four total. So those, that's those two that I had bought and, you know, traded back to, um, actually I just sold them back in a trade for anything, to MPB. Uh, there was a third lens, which was a kit lens for a camera that I sent to them. Uh, the camera was probably eight months old or so. I, I can't remember exactly, but it was pristine, like new. They rated it as like new, had the box and everything. You know, every single piece that came with that camera, brand new, that I bought from a camera store, went to them. They rated the cameras like new. But the lens, the kit lens that I had with that camera, which again was in per perfect, pristine, like new condition, they rated that as like or uh, excellent condition instead of like new. So that's a downgrade and you get less money. And the fourth lens was a lens that I bought myself. Again, had only used it for a few months and I don't use it that much. It was a prime lens and I just kind of use it out here for nature and so on. I don't even take it with me anywhere. Um, and it's not an expensive lens, but that lens was totally like new condition. Again, had the box, even the box was like new, the, the camera box on the camera I gave, you know, sold them was like new. Um, if you've been to my website, you, you see I kind of switch around cameras sometimes a little more than most people. But um, so I take really good care of my gear, knowing that I'm probably going to resell it at some point and want to get as much as I can out of it. So four of those lenses, you know, they should have been, in my opinion, especially two of them because they sold them to me like new and I sent them back exactly like they sent them to me, same condition two months later, and they marked them down as excellent instead of like new. So just keep that in mind. Uh, again, MPB is a UK company. So if you end up selling gear to them, let's say you ship it on a Monday, it gets to them Wednesday. You'd be lucky if they check it by Friday. But let's say, for example, they do get it checked by like Friday at noon and you get a message saying, you know, your gear has been checked. Okay, great. I should probably be getting a payment pretty soon for that. Well, no, you got to wait for the whole weekend to go by because, um, time zone difference in the UK. They process the payments in the UK from what I've been told by one of the employees when I was checking on it because I had a trip coming up and I wanted to make sure I got this done quickly. Um, so you might lose a few days because of time zone differences if you hit a weekend, but just keep in mind, it might take you about a week and a half to get the deal done. Uh, if you're sending gear to MPB and you know, from the time that you send it to them to the time that you get paid about a week and a half. Now on eBay, um, you've all heard the horror stories about eBay and I personally have been an eBay member since like, like year 2000. Um, so it's like 23 years at this point. Um, and I've never had any of those strange problems. I had a couple little glitches, um, you know, for equipment that I sent out that I sold to somebody. And, you know, I've never been cheated out of anything. eBay has always supported me. If, if I did have a problem, which I've almost had never, almost never had any problems. But um, there's a couple things if you want to sell something on eBay and make a, a pretty good, um, get a pretty good price for it. And first of all, you need to make really nice pictures of it, make sure it's all cleaned up, obviously, uh, present it well, show everything that's going to be included, a good description. I mean, you could even include why you're selling it if, you know, if you're just a personal hobby photographer and you're not, you know, a company reselling stuff. Um, provide more personal information about it. I think people like that. And they like to know that they're just not getting stuff from somebody that just buys and sells crap all the time. So. 
I've been able to get really good prices on my equipment and I've been kind of shocked sometimes. And people will buy stuff from me and almost pay regular price that you could pay in the store and I'm thinking, why, why are you buying this from me? You know, for like maybe $200 less if it's an expensive item than what it would be brand new and you're not getting a warranty for it. And you know, I listed in my, my eBay listings that I don't accept returns because you just It happens and people sometimes they give you a crazy price and you, I think a couple things you need to do when you're on eBay, just make sure, keep an eye on who's bidding on your stuff. Um, you know, I only sell ship if it's, you know, well, pretty much anything. Um, I only ship it inside the country, you know, inside the U.S. I just like to keep it in the country. I think it's a little bit easier and uh, makes things a little quicker and if there's any dispute, probably a little better, a little easier to deal with. Um, the other thing is um, with people, people bidding that don't have any feedback or have very little feedback or the feedback was like years ago, I get a little you know, nervous about people like that and I'll sometimes just remove their bid and block them if, if, uh, so they can't bid again. Uh, because I've had a couple instances, it at least happened, it twi happened at least twice in the last year or so where somebody with almost no feedback, they might have been a fairly new member or been a member for like three, four years, but they'll bid on something and uh, they'll win the auction and then you'll never hear from them. Um, I don't know if they just do it to screw with people, but you know, that I send an email to eBay complaining, you know, like you probably should just ban this person and remove them because they had no intention to pay. You know, there was no contact with these people. And um, it, it, I think sometimes, well, I, don't, I have no idea what's going on, but I've had it happen a couple times where people will bid, you never hear from them, they never pay. And um, so that's one of the problems you could run into on eBay. And I know there's some sophisticated scams going on on eBay, but you know, again, I've never really run into that. I just try to keep track of who's bidding and look at their feedback and see if it looks like somebody that's legit, like, you know, this is legit feedback and they've got a history. So I think overall, now the price that you can get for selling to MPV, MPB versus eBay, if it's something that's, desirable you know like a camera or lens that people actually want um, i think personally you could get more eBay money on ebay even after the fees but it's going to take a little more work from you you know you got to take all the pictures make the listing and kind of watch the bidding and make sure everything's looking right um, so and that could you know take a little time because you're going to maybe have it listed for about a week and then you got to wait for the person to pay if they're not paying like right away you know they should be paying within a couple of days um, you know, and if you're dealing with multiple pe people, you're selling three, four, five different things. Um, you have to kind of keep track of all that and sh multiple shipments. So you, while, while you could make more money on eBay, um, it could be more of a hassle, even if everything goes perfect. Um, so the sun just went behind a cloud, by the way, as if the white balance changed. Um, so yeah, it's, it's kind of a, depends on the timing and what you need you know how much money you want for something if you don't care about doing all the extra work for selling on ebay um, but you know it could turn out to be better just selling it to mpb or you know a place like keh or bnh or adorama all these places that buy used gear or even your local camera store if you checked that before um, you know that's my local camera store when i've tried to sell to them before they it was kind of insulting the price they would want to give me and my stuff again was like pristine almost like new um and just you know i i don't know i just almost felt like slapping a guy you know because <laughs> it just was it was just um so low it was ridiculous i'm like are you serious and i'm thinking you know i know it's very easy for you to sell when i'm trying to sell to you and they could turn around and sell it really easily so it's i don't know it's hard to say exactly what's going to work out best for you but um I would say if you need to do it quickly and safely, a, a company like MPB would, you know, be fine. Um, KEH, you know, again, you you hear complaints about all these different places, so it's, you know, it's it's like a hotel. You look at hotel reviews, and some people are just really, you know, that I, I don't know what their issue is. They're just extra demanding, and you know, they'll leave crappy reviews because of this and that and you and you show at the same hotel and everything's perfect and it looks like a great place and it was almost brand new hotel and you're wondering why why did somebody leave a bad review and you're looking at what they wrote versus what's actually there and you're you're scratching your head head why they uh, wrote a bad review like that but so these other places you know selling 
year to these places, it's sometimes you might have a bad experience, sometimes you won't, probably most likely you won't. Um, I bought something from KEH a long time ago, um, didn't have any issues, I had sent something back, um, they took it fine. Um, but uh, I haven't really sold anything to them or done any kind of trade or anything like that, so I don't really know KEH as far as how they operate and I can't really comment on how good they would be to deal with. But I, I did definitely have experiences with MPB and definitely have a long history with eBay. And um, oh, there's other things like camera, camera gear forums, you know, if you're part of a camera gear discussion forum online, you know, there's some of these places like um, Fred Miranda, um, there, there's a lot of other places, a lot of camera discussion websites where you can sell gear there, but it, it's, it's hard to sell stuff there unless you find the exact right person that's interested in it. It might take you forever to sell it or you never sell it. Um, you know, and then there's places like Craigslist where you could get mugged and killed, uh, <laughs> or it could go great. I've, I've actually sold some things on Craigslist, uh, like a, a trailer and, uh, you know, like a little pull behind trailer, on, you know, pull behind a car or whatever. Um, you know, things like that, it's because that's kind of really the only easy way to sell stuff like that. Um, so I have had, you know, fine experiences with Craigslist, but I always make sure to meet them like in the grocery store parking lot where there's a lot of people around in the middle of the day. Um, you know, don't meet somebody at their house. Uh, even, or don't let somebody come to your house uh, if you're selling something on Craigslist or anything, even eBay, you know, local pickup. You know, make sure you go somewhere uh, just for your own safety and parking lot of a grocery store somewhere. And, in broad daylight and make sure uh, everybody can see. It was a little bit helpful to anybody that's interested. That that's my experience with selling stuff. Um, again, I have a long history on eBay. Um, I haven't really had any problems there and I get a really good price for it. And I thought I was kind of getting hosed on the fees at eBay because they've kind of gotten up to like 10, 11, 12% of what you, what the sale price is. And then customer has to pay tax. So it, it's, you know, it's not like the old days where you could buy something on eBay and not pay tax and it was kind of a benefit to the buyer and it helped you out as a seller. But uh, nowadays, you know, they have to pay, t they have to pay tax. Um, and so it's just, you know, whether you do it with, sell stuff to, through eBay or you sell gear directly to MPB, it's, you know, it's kind of a wash. But uh, anyway, that's my experience. So hopefully that helps out. And here's a little video from my Nikon Z8 if you're interested. And again, this is like, pretty much full auto. Um, I have the auto area AF, uh, full-time auto focus going on. And uh, so that's at that AFF, if you're familiar with Nikon autofocus, it's autofocus full-time. Uh, auto area with the subject detection turned on for people. Um, all the subject detection for all this other stuff is turned off. There's, there's an automatic mode. Um, so it should pick up like automatically recognize people or cars. Can just select one of those categories so i selected people for this one um, just to make sure it's only looking for a person and i'm right in the middle of the frame so it should be easy um, but yeah this so far if you're curious about my nikon z8 um, super happy to have one it is a wonderful camera it just it just gets out of your way and shoots i mean that's that's all i can say about it it's it's like a z7 or z7 II, but a lot faster and a lot better as far as you know the all the customizations and the pro level features that you might want. Uh, I'm never going to use all the, <laughs> a lot of the features in this camera. Mostly I'm taking still photos, but um, even when I'm shooting static subjects, uh, I'm using 3D tracking with con continuous autofocus because it's just so much easier and quicker than using AFS with single point autofocus, you know, focus recompose, and, you know, with uh, AFC and 3D tracking, I can just put the box on something, half press and move the, focus or move the composition around however I want and make photos it's it's a lot easier so all right I'll stop with that and uh, thanks for watching